Welcome to Governor Jim Justice's eighth and final State of the State Address. Forecast I'm Senate Randy Oey, government reporter for West Virginia Public Broadcasting. The Senate has adopted without amendment House Concurrent Resolution 1, extending Governor an Justice will be giving this address to 134 to senators and delegates, and along with cabinet secretaries, agency leaders, Supreme Court justices, and invited guests, all in the newly renovated House chambers. Mr. Speaker, the Board of Public Works. And there's the introduction by the doorkeeper. And for the eighth and final time, our two-term governor, Jim Justice, will be making his State of the State address. The governor gave a bit of a general preview of his address during a media briefing last week. He Mr. said he would talk Speaker, about some of his achievements, a 21.25 percent personal income tax cut, a state revenue surplus that stands at 400 million, billions of dollars in economic development projects from major corporations like LG, Nucor Steel, and Berkshire Hathaway. Judging from past addresses, it's likely that Justice will announce another economic development project or two. He recently voiced his support for yet another 5% pay raise for Mr. school Speaker, teachers, staff, and state the employees. Armstead and the justices of the Supreme Court of Appeals. We now see Supreme Court justices coming in. They'll sit up toward the front. You know, last week, Senate President Craig Blair the Speaker of the House Roger Hanshaw said they would support those 5% pay raises. That'll be interesting to follow in the upcoming legislative session. Mr. Speaker, the President and members of the Senate. Senate President Craig Blair. You know, there are often surprises in a Justice State of the State address. So he brought in a high school cheerleading squad. He portrayed Frankenstein way back when in his very first state of the state to kind of show what he thought was a slow and plodding economy for West Virginia until he took office. He said he'd never thought about running for re-election after four years, but he said he was on such a roll that he just had no other choice. And today, Justice threw his hat into the ring and officially filed to run for U.S. Senate. Now we see the 86th gathering of the Senate coming in. The House chamber that you're looking at was just renovated. First time that's happened since 1995. All those 100 desks were refinished. That's new panels on the wall, new carpeting, new sound system. Chair recognizes Sergeant Arms. Mr. Speaker, the committee heretofore appointed to wait upon the governor. Chair recognizes Delegate Householder. Mr. Speaker, it is my honor and privilege to announce that His Excellency, Governor Justice, is present and ready to address the Joint Assembly. There he is, Governor Jim Justice. As he makes his way to the podium, we'll listen to the applause. And the governor of West Virginia's eighth State of the State Address, Governor Jim Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice. A 
okay, sit down. Y'all look like you're getting tired. <laughs> and you got to clap a lot tonight. Oh, me. I'll get to the meat and the pet potatoes in just a second. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you from all of us, all of my family in every way, for all the years and all the time we spent together, bickering at times, but hopefully loving each other in the end, and absolutely loving West Virginia, no matter what. Now, if I could make some incredible introductions here, and it's just this. You know, I'd like to introduce my family, especially Kathy, who has to put up with me all the time. And please give Kathy and Jill and Jay a big round of applause, please. Okay, the members of my cabinet, and I really don't see any need in going e through each secretary, but in thinking about it, maybe I should, you know, because of all the great work that they do all the time. You know, we have three new secretaries, the Secretary of Health, the Secretary of Human Services, and the Secretary of Health Facilities. You know, so if Sherry Young, Cynthia Persley, and Mike Caruso would stand up, then maybe you could give them a round of applause. Now we have a new interim Secretary of Revenue in Larry Pack. And God knows all of y'all know Larry, and we've known him forever. Our Secretary of Administration, Mark Scott. Our Secretary of Homeland Security, Mark Chisora. Our Secretary of Transportation, Jimmy Riston. Our Secretary of Veterans Assistance, Ted Diaz. And our Secretary of Economic Development, Mitch Carmichael. Please give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> now this man, demands uniqueness beyond belief. Our curator, Randall Reed Smith. In I'm going to hustle along here because we've got a lot, lot to talk about tonight. Our Secretary of Tourism, Chelsea Ruby. Our Secretary of our DEP, who's doing a phenomenal job, Harold Ward. And our Secretary of Commerce, James Bailey. Please give them a round of applause. Our Adjutant General, General Bill Crane and our command, command Sergeant Major, James jo Jones, our Chancellor of the West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission, Sarah Tucker, and our Commissioner of our Bureau of Senior Services, Denise Worley, and last but not least, our Director of our Herberson, I mean, Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs, Jill Upson. Please give them a big round of applause. Now, don't hit your hands so much that your hands get sore, and you can blame that on me and not on me later on. But, uh, but think about this just to say, please, my staff, my staff that's been with me for a long, long time, and they've done so much good work, and they had to have to put up with me 
with periodically maybe a come to Jesus meeting or they have, have to put up with me, you know, when I would have a nut fit or whatever it may be. And there's times that I could be dead wrong. But please give them a big round of applause. Now, our Supreme Court, our Chief Justice, Tim Armstead, Justice Beth Walker, Justice John Hutchinson, Justice Haley Bunn, and Justice William Bill Wooten, please give them a giant round of applause. Oh, thank you. I have to tell you this, but John Hutchinson looks so innocent, doesn't he? <laughs> now, just think about this. We were practicing basketball at Woodrow Wilson in the year, the year I believe, I believe I was a sophomore and John was a junior. So John's way, way, way older than me. <laughs> but in all that, we were lining up at the center circle at the Raleigh County Armory to jump ball. There was five sophomores on the team, and we ended up winning the state championship. But with all that being said, those five sophomores, one of 15, were just ground fodder. Absolutely, we just got run over every single day. And in this situation, I truly did. Because as the ball was thrown up, John wheeled around at warp speed and hit me right in the nose with his head. My nose broke in three places. Blood was going everywhere. And the coach was screaming, Justice, get off the damn court. And it... So anyway, Brother John, I'll never forget that. <laughs> our constitutional officers from our left, our Attorney General, Patrick Morrissey, please give him a big round of applause. Our state auditor, J.B. McCuskey, another round of applause. Our Secretary of State, Mac Warner, please, another round of applause. Our Commissioner of Agriculture, Kent Leonhardt, same. Our State Treasurer, Riley Moore, and our State Superintendent of Schools, Michelle Blatt. Well, it's been easy up to now. But just think about this. Seven years ago, and seven years for some, I'm sure has gone really, really fast. This is my last day of the state. Seven years. My gosh, it seemed like an eternity when it all started. For a lot, it's gone really fast. And I'm sure for several of you, it's gone really slow. <laughs> but along the way, I've tried to do this. I've tried to give wisdom. Wisdom that I was taught mostly from my dad. You know, wisdom about don't confuse effort with accomplishment. Or if you can't get it done in 24 hours a day, you got to work nights. You know, Dad would have said, as I stood in front of him and said, Dad, there wasn't anything I could do. And as the desk exploded, as he jumped forward and grabbed me as an 18-year-old around my shirt and just slammed me down on the desk and said, darn you, but he didn't say darn you. He said, you best better always remember this. There's always something you can do, and you darn well ought to always remember that. Well, that's how I've lived my life. That's all there is to it. I believe that. I believe 
that if you give it to God above and you give your best and you give your best like nobody's business, good things will happen. Now, I'm going to give you one more bit of advice right now. I gave this same advice to that bunch of young ladies that's right up there. That's my basketball team. A bunch of kids that are the best of the best. I said to them, there's no substitute for being there. Absolutely always showing up, always giving your best, and there is no substitute for being there. Now, with all that being said, if we could focus just a second on being there, let me tell you something, and I just came up with this probably yesterday. I looked at the mileage deal on my vehicle, and this is four or five vehicles into this. It's 248,000 miles right now. I totaled up the vehicles over the last years that I've been your governor, and I am approaching driving one million miles in the state of West Virginia. A million miles. I do it on my dime, and I do it proudly because I really think that I'm here to serve. Now, just think about it. Well, what is a million miles? Do you realize that if we left here right this minute and we headed to the Pacific Ocean in California, I could have done that 500 times, 500 times on the mileage that I have spent traveling all across this unbelievable state. Now, if I would absolutely just tell you just this, Along the way, maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm, I'm the guy that's not crazy about spending your money. Maybe I'm the guy that's really not crazy about having a party every other night. Or maybe I'm the guy that's not crazy about flying in your aircraft. Can you imagine I've been in your helicopter one time? One time. I am crazy about just this. I'm crazy about serving. You know, our forefathers stepped up, and I think an awful lot of you are doing exactly the same thing. You're on the cusp right now of being away from your families for all practical purposes for 60 days. And what you're paid is nothing. Absolutely, at the end of the day, I can't thank you enough. Now, I'll tell you this job at times can be pretty doggone tough. And there's days that it's plenty lonely. And there's days that you're tired and you feel beat up. And lo and behold, out of the clear blue sky, you know, there's more and more days that you see families that are devastated with floods or whatever it may be, and there's not maybe anything you can do. You absolutely see our heroes, our heroes that are the first that we all call that maybe we've lost. And you sit briefing after briefing after briefing, and you read the names of 7,000 plus people that we've lost. Now, we don't read the names, do we? We read the age and the sex and the county. It was terrible, absolutely terrible because I know so well what each and every one of those families were going through. It was really tough. I see the pain at times that my family has. And I would tell you just this, though. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand times over, I'd do it again. And a thousand, a thousand, a thousand times over, they would too. Now, let me just read a couple lines to you. When the first time you saw me, I stood before you pledging to fight for the soul of our state. We were staring down a dark tunnel. Our, st our state was bankrupt. Our jobs and our people were leaving and our spirit was broken. Do you remember those days? Do you remember what that was like? It wasn't any fun, was it? Now, I would also tell you that oftentimes, 
Things come in really odd-looking packages. And I'm it. <laughs> you know, you got a big guy. For crying out loud, he's got a bulldog too. With all that being said, the big guy brought whiteboards in the beginning. Sweat was running off of him in every direction known to man while I was running back and forth and trying to get this written and this written and this written. The big guy's creative, and the big guy's got big, big, big dreams. I do have a ton of energy that God has given me and a lot, a lot, a lot of enthusiasm. I believed that there was real hope, and I believed it. I believed most and first and foremost overwhelmingly that God above was at play in all of our hearts, right here with us each and every day. It didn't matter to me that we were absolutely the benefactors of decades after decades after decades on who was going to be 50th in this country. It didn't matter to me. I knew, I knew just how good you really are. And I knew it. And I believed it. I asked you to close your eyes at that point in time, a long back, way back, and think of the place, the place that's within a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population and has four unbelievable seasons and all these natural resources and the real treasure, you, you, the greatness of the people. I'll ask you before I'm done tonight to close your eyes one more time. I came in at the first day of the state and I said just these, and think about just this for a second. I said we need to make education our centerpiece. We need to grow tourism. We need to diversify our economies. We need to never, never, never forget our coal miners, our gas workers, and our fossil fuels. We need to absolutely change our standard of life. We need to pass roads to prosperity, and we need to change our image. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. From the first crack out of the box, nothing changed. Just think about it. You know, we absolutely stepped up to the plate in regard to education. We sure got a long ways to go. We've got parents now that can choose where they want to go and what they want to do. Absolutely, we've grown tourism off the blooming chart. And every dadgum dollar that you put in tourism, you don't put enough, and you don't put enough, and you don't put enough, because every dollar you put in, it comes ripping back to us instantaneously. Absolutely, I said diversify the economy. We could not just depend on one industry all the time. I, my family's been in the coal business forever. But we couldn't depend on the one industry all the time. But we don't forget, do we? And you know what happened? Because us putting another stake in the sand and saying we're not going to forget our fossil fuels. And for those crazies that are out there in la-la land that believe we can do without fossil fuels today, go back to your crazy stuff. You know, to be perfectly honest, I don't want to starve to death in the dark. Now, <laughs> when you're thinking about standard of life, you've got to be thinking about two things about people coming to West Virginia. What do they ask? How's the schools? How the roads? How's the schools? How the roads? Over and over and over and over and over, the same thing. Well, think about it. Granted, our schools have got a ways to go. Granted, we do. But you know, I think you should always, all, never forget just this. Jim's in the schools all the time. All the time. Why would I tell you anything but the truth? I challenge the media every day over and over and over and over and over. Find something that knowingly I've told you is not true. Politicians do it nonstop. 
find something that Jim Justice has told you that's not true. You can't do it. You can't do it. Now, with all that being said, think about that standard of life and think about our schools. Now, here's the next thing I'll absolutely challenge you to do. Go pick a school. I don't care what the school is. Pick a middle school. Pick an elementary school. Go to the school. Walk into the fourth grade class. Do this. Please do this. Walk into the fourth grade class, and it may be Miss Lily's class, and ask Miss Lily to come out in the hall and leave her out in the hall just a second. Go back in and say to the kids, what do y'all think of Miss Lily? And I'll bet you overwhelmingly they say, we love Miss Lily. And then go out and ask Miss Lily what she thinks of her students, and she'll, you'll get the same answer. And then go downtown and say, what do you think of Cameron Elementary School? What do you think of Peyton City? What do you think? And here's the answer. We love our school. We love our school. And it means everything to our community. And we got stuff to improve. But for God's sake to live, and if the kids love the teacher and the teacher loves the kids and the, and the community loves the school, we got a lot going on in a good way, too. Our roads to prosperity launched us. And we had, whether you liked it or didn't like it, we had to change our image. Today, of all things, and if I could say it in slang, who could have ever thunk it? Think about it. In world travel magazines, in countries so far away, we don't even have any idea where they are. They're saying, West Virginia is the place you ought to go. You're seeing it all around you. You're seeing it everywhere. Absolutely, we're a different place today. With all that together, what happened? Then the rocket ship took off, didn't it? Now, I'm going to read just a couple more lines to you. We've climbed that mountain together. We've pulled the rope together. Every step of the way and the view from the top, top is breathtaking. Think about that. If I could just touch on just a couple more. It all started, like I said, with the Roads to Prosperity pro program. You know, our roads are anything but just steel and concrete. The roads absolutely are arteries that are pumping life back into our very towns and cities. Every mile we pave is a mile closer to new horizons, to jobs that are coming home, and to, and to families that can stay home. And speaking of families, we stepped up. We stepped up for our troopers. We stepped up for our teachers and our public servants. We absolutely stepped up when they were having a tough time. We delivered pay raise after pay raise. Our schools now have new life. Our streets are safer. And our state runs like a well-oiled machine at this time, pumping out pride and not desperation. Remember the taxes we paid, the regulations that burden our businesses. We slashed them together, together, all of us. We cut the red tape, and what happened? Businesses are absolutely booming, and jobs are multiplying. And West Virginia has become a magnet for dreams, not dust. Our revenue surpluses have reached heights that nobody could have ever dreamed of. That's all there is to it. And we're returning those dollars to you. But it's not all about dollars and cents, is it? When it really boils right down to it, it's about the soul of this state. We protected our coal miners our gun rights, and our unborn babies. I could not be more proud. <laughs> we 
We fought for our faith, did we not? Our families, our freedoms. We stood tall in West Virginia, and West Virginia strong we were through COVID and fires, floods and storms. And the world is seeing the West Virginia grit that we've got. Now I'm going to lay aside what we've done because my dad would say to me over and over and over, again, at one time, believe it or not, I was skinny and had brown hair and I was a hotty toddy golfer. I won our state junior amateur a couple of times and I went all over the place playing in tournament after tournament with Sam Sneed. It was something. He actually thought I was a pretty good player. With all that being said, my dad would have said to me a thousand, thousand times, son, the only shot in golf that matters is the next shot. If your last shot went dead in the middle of the swamp, what can you do about it? If the last shot was a hole in one, what does it matter? The only shot in life, in many situations, is the next shot. And so with that being said, I would say to you, we're a long ways from being done in West Virginia. We've got jobs to create, schools to enhance, and communities to lift. So let's make this last year that I have, and then the decades to come, better and better and better and better. Please, let's do just that. If I could talk just about a second about economic development, here's what I'd say to you. How does it feel? How does it feel to go to the plate today and every single time you go to the plate, you're hitting a home run? That's how it feels. For God's sakes of living, you can't imagine the businesses that are calling over and over and over and the opportunities for jobs and goodness that other states had that we never had. It's real. It's absolutely real. These are numbers that I've been given and everything, but numbers since 2017, we've created 12,591 jobs. We have retained 20,155 jobs, and there's 240 companies in the mix somewhere. We do have a seat at the table now, and in my words, we are the seat. Do you get that? For God's sakes of living, of all things, West Virginia is the seat. We're competing on that world stage and we're winning. There's six new businesses that I'm going to announce to you and I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Wet Fuel Cell is coming to the Bridgeport Airport with an investment of $64 million and 203 jobs. Clean Seas is coming to Quincy with 40 new jobs and a $50 million investment. We have an expansion or retained businesses of Alcon in Cabell County that's spending $70 million with 500 jobs. G Stamp is coming to South Charleston with $70 million of investment and 400 new jobs. SMR Technologies is coming to Nicholas County with 40 new jobs. No, I'm sorry, with, with 40 jobs, 100 retained jobs, and 23 million in investment in Mountaintop Beverage is coming to Morgantown with $220 million of investment, 100, uh, 210 retained jobs, and 140 more jobs that are being added. Please give all these folks your heartfelt applause. Amazon is coming to West Virginia again, but this time Amazon is coming with AWS. You know, we can't even run the internet without AWS. It is amazing the partnership that's beginning to happen with our schools. There's a lot, lot, lot to still to be put forth in, in regard to this. But we have two people, and I think they're here tonight, and, but, but is Kim Majera's with us? Kim, are you here? 
Okay, there's Kim. Please give her a big round of applause. And Faisal Hanafi, is he here? There he is. Think about this, and you deserve so much credit. Tax cuts. We've cut taxes in West Virginia 23 times since I walked in the door. 23 different times. And delivered on the biggest tax cut, the biggest tax cut in state history, hands down. I would tell you just this. The faster that we can get rid of the taxes on the individuals, the better we'll be. You can't. We can't do it all on day one. We've got to mind the store properly. That's all there is to it. You've got to mind the store properly. You can't do it all on day one. But it doesn't mean that we don't see the beacon and we don't drive ourselves there as fast and as hard as we can possibly go to get there. Tonight I'm proposing two more. I'm proposing the total elimination of Social Security tax on all, on all. I'm proposing a child and dependent care tax credit to where folks that are struggling with daycare can at least write them off your, your taxes against your revenue. We need this, and we need this very badly, and we need it right now. As far as the budget goes, this for all practical purposes is the sixth, sixth year where we've absolutely had, for all practical purposes, a flat budget. You know, I want to say this, and I say this pretty profoundly. You know, I don't want to sound braggadocious about anything, but my administration does not believe in growing government. And my administration does not believe in dipping into our rainy day fund and using our rainy day fund. We use surpluses. We use earnings to absolutely make choices, to do projects, to grow this state. But we've got to do it while minding that store that I refer to all the time. Tonight I have a few things that I am adding based on earnings and dollars that we've got and these few things are first just this. We have Dr. Eric Cage with us here. And if you could please stand. <laughs> this may surprise you, but absolutely that is one whale of a school in my book. And I absolutely grew up and cut my teeth from a business standpoint, running an ag operation, and it grew and it grew and it grew. We need a state-of-the-art ag lab, and I am proposing we put $50 million in a new state-of-the-art ag lab and locate it at West Virginia State University. We need to stand behind our moms, don't we? I'm proposing three million for crisis pregnancy centers. We need to stand beside, behind our seniors, absolutely the very people that brung us to the dance, 
the very people that in oftentimes we run away from and we think, oh, they'll be okay. No, they won't be okay. $20 million to our senior centers, $15 million to our state parks, $5 million to absolutely never forget our firemen, our EMSs, and their agencies. We need to fund them with $10 million. This is a pile of money, but we have grown this state to have a pile of money. So instead of just sitting there stirring in a pile of money, let's put the money at work. Let's make the money work for us. Two million dollars for the very, very people that we owe everything in life to, to the state's veteran, veterans home. Five million dollars for seed money to start charter schools. $150 million is a gigantic investment to the school building authority. $50 million for flood resiliency. You know, I've gone over and over and over and seen bad, bad, bad things happen. And maybe they didn't cost all the money in the world and the folks absolutely didn't qualify for FEMA. And there they were. There they were with the inloader at the end of the street, picking up all their memories and everything and throwing them in the back of a dump truck and off they went. It's tough, really tough. And when you've got to just sit there and put your arm around them and say, there's nothing I can do, then I think about dad. Absolutely, there's always something you can do. And this will help a lot of folks. You know, our West Virginia hospitals all across our land step up for us over and over and over and over and over. I know this is not all the money in the world, but I want to, spend, I want to propose that we spend $100 million, listen to all of our hospitals, let probably Ann Erling figure this out because Ann can make $3 go from here to Texas and back. <laughs> and where all this leaves us today, you may think, my gosh, I'm living all this money. Where this leaves us today is with $310 million in the income tax fund, and a billion two hundred million dollars in the rainy day fund, a billion five hundred million dollars in this state, it still leaves us right where I said, mind the store, mind the store. So I want to put ten million dollars back in the Posey Perry fund because we have now spent 9.5 million of the 10 million we had last year. In some way, somehow, all of you have got to realize, and all you've got to do is go with Kathy Justice and communities and schools or whatever. All you've got to do is go to the school. Go and be with the kids. And what you're going to see is you're going to see in a lot of situations that maybe, just maybe, it may be the parents' fault, but the kids are suffering. The kids are hungry, too. Go somewhere to a senior center to see somebody that's really having a hard time. They're having a hard time getting to, getting food to. We have got, with all our bountiful harvest that God above has given us, we've got to stop hunger in this state. So I tell you just this. There's a man with us tonight. His name is Larry Lester. Larry works this food bank where my uncle, his name was Posey Perry. He was a coal miner. And after he retired from the coal mines for 30 years, he died when he was 94. For 30 years, he worked the food bank at Huff Creek. 39. 39. <laughs> is that Larry? 
Stand up, please. Larry now has the reins and has been there a long time himself. He knows what hunger really is all about. We got to stop it. We got to stop it. I am proposing an across the board 5% pay raise for the fifth time, for the fifth time to all of our teachers and service personnel and all those in government. Hopefully this will more more than cover, and it will, it will more than cover the PEIA extra cost. And with all that, at the end of the day, what we wanted to do is not to cover. We want it to cover, and those folks put some money in their pocket. They... Mm. Mm. The EMS Answer the Call Initiative. Think about this. In 2021, 542. In 2023, 938. It is amazing, amazing. So many West Virginians are now working and have become EMTs and we need them and we needed them so badly. We have a gentleman with us tonight. I am proposing that $10 million to where we can continue funding this through my budget. And this program is unbelievable. There's a fellow with us tonight. His name is Darren Crozier. And I absolutely, I want to read to you a quote that Darren said. And the glare on this has given me a little bit of a fit, but I'll, I'll hold it here. It says, I'm so thankful to be a part of something like this, to see tax dollars going to the betterment of West Virginians. We do this because we love West Virginia and we love our communities. This training has helped me in so many ways. It gave me a career and great health benefits for myself, my wife, and my three children. This was very rewarding and it taught me that I could learn again. Please give a great big round of applause to, uh, again, one of our heroes, Darren Crozier. <laughs> Think about nursing. Think of what, about what we did. We decided, you know, because we had extra dollars, we figured it all out and everything. We put $48 million into an absolute situation to be able to train and, and to retain and attract nurses to the state of West Virginia. It worked, didn't it? It worked. We had 810 new nursing students that enrolled in the first year. I am proposing that we add 30 million to this great program and continue the funding and Genevieve, I think it's Lane Johnson, is with us tonight. And if you could give her a great big round of applause. She is a graduate. She is working at WVU Medicine Thomas. And she graduated five months early. You know, I can't ever say I graduated five months early. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, when a lot of report cards people are talking about A's and B's, you know, I, I was very fortunate to make an A or a B. Sometimes it wasn't an A or a B. <laughs> you know, our foster care system needs us to continue to step up, doesn't it? That's all there is to it. The kids need us so badly. We made a move in dividing up DHHR. We have three great, great secretaries now. There's still tons of work to do. Tons and tons and tons of work to do. We need 
CPS workers. We need more dollars. There's been real improvement made. You know, we've gone from vacancy numbers of 33% down to 17. We've gone from youth services workers from 45 needed that, that were vacancies to nine. Sounds great, doesn't it? But there's so much more to do. At the end of the day, we need to do all we possibly can to help these families and help these kids, and we're going to do it. Jobs and Hope is the same kind of story. First started out as Jim's dream, went to Jobs and Hope and everything. You know, there's been 5,024 that have gone through the Jobs and Hope program and gotten jobs. 1,765 have gotten their driver's license back. 1,244 aren't on SNAP payments anymore. There's a fellow with us right now here tonight. He is, his name is James Braswell. James was a graduate. James absolutely founded a solar design and installation company, a graduate, and, and, and founded a new company in the state and has hired two other additional people that went through Jobs and Hope. James, please stand. Let's give you a great round of applause. Corrections. Corrections were in the papers all the time. Absolutely with all in us, we know, we all know we've got work to do there. We all know the simple, simple thing that happened. I mean, for God's sakes of living, let's just call it like it is. What happened was, you know, absolutely everybody said, maybe subconsciously, but said, you know, We've got to do this, and we've got to do this, and we've got to do this. And those folks did bad stuff. And really, at the end of the rainbow, maybe they were the last that got fed. We've got to do stuff. And so we have. We have tried to step up, and we've tried to do an amazing, amazing work right now. We have recently graduated 227 graduates that can now work in our jails all across the state. You know, we are, immediate, we are effective as we speak, downsizing the National Guard in our facilities. And it is my hope beyond belief that by the end of the summer, the National Guard will be out of our facilities and we will have solved this problem in many ways. There's a corporal with us tonight. His name is James Hamilton. And absolutely, I congratulate him in many, many, many different ways. You know, he, he worked at Mount Olive. He was in the, our National Guard. And then decided the pastor's greener somewhere else because of lots of different factors. And then all of a sudden, you know, we had pay raises and we pushed the right buttons here and there. And he's come home. And so he's doing great work, and absolutely he has, has been honorably discharged from the National Guard, and he's working full-time at Mount Olive, and he's with us tonight. So James, please stand wherever you are. Do this, just while you're standing and everything, I want to hear you at the top of our, the realms and everything from the standpoint of just showing your appreciation and your love and your thanks for our National Guard. It is unflat believable what they do. I've told you this a million times, but I've said over and over and over, we owe every single thing we have, everything we have, 
First and foremost, to God above. But secondly, to our veterans. We do. And all those that are serving in our active military today. You know, this world today is a spooky place. That's all there is to it. But we have two people, Jamie and Jihan, and it's uh, Springston. They absolutely came back and seeked education, and they came back as veterans to West Virginia. Jamie is enrolled at Marshall right now, and he heads up the Student Vets chapter. Absolutely, these folks came back. Why did they come back? Or why did they pick, rather, West Virginia? I'll tell you why they picked West Virginia. They picked West Virginia because there's no personal income tax on their pensions. They absolutely picked West Virginia because they see us on a pathway to eradicating the income tax on them. We've made a big move at 21 and a quarter. We need to continue to make more and more and more moves. And they chose us. They could have gone anywhere. Absolutely, as they propagate this message through all the grapevines, it brings more and more super qualified people to us, our veterans. So Jamie and Jehan, wherever you are, please stand. I'm going to stick with the veterans. I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to stick with the veterans here in a minute, you know, for a minute. But I am announcing a bill tonight to give free, in, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, to give our, our all of our veterans, nobody's going to pay out-of-state tuition. We're going to pay in-state tuition in the state of West Virginia. In addition to that, two more initiatives. I want to spend $5 million to supercharge the Ascend program in West Virginia and $2.5 million from a joint initiative recruitment of our big bases all across the land to bring more veterans to West Virginia. You know, we truly, truly, truly do love and appreciate our vets. And absolutely, West Virginia has made the contributions and stepped up that more than any other per capita state in the land. We absolutely owe them, owe them. And so please support those, those initiatives. I want to talk to you just a second about Kathy and communities and schools. You know, in all fairness, we started down a path in the beginning to where there wasn't any money. There wasn't any money to do anything. In all honesty, remember, just remember, when they gave me the books the first go round, and we looked, for gosh sakes of living, we were, we were halfway through the year. Like you'll give a new governor, you know, sometime about this time next year. What if he, that governor got something that halfway through the year, he was told then you're going to be $217 million short. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have a constitutional amendment to have a balanced budget. What in the world is this about? And then they say, no, that's not the bad news. The bad news in your first year, we're
Kathy, you deserve so much credit. That's all there is to it. There's a wealth of people behind this, but I am telling you, and you can put it in the bank, Jim Justice, if you believe anything he tells you in the world, you better believe this. I have been in school after school after school after school, and I've seen it work and work and work and work. There's a fellow with us tonight. His name is Will Mattis. He was at Huntington High School not long ago, and his dad was a nurse at Kanawha County EMS. His dad died, and Will probably didn't know where in the world to turn. And things weren't going well at all for Will. All of a sudden, the coordinator at the school and Will connected. Today, Will is a marketing major at Marshall University, and today he's with us. And the other thing that Will has done that it will blow you away is as soon as he got there, he loved photography, and he went to the athletic department and told him that he could take all these great pictures of the athletes and everything. And today, today he's looked on and counted on as one of their shining stars in the athletic department. So wherever Will is, please stand and give him a great big round of applause. I'm calling and asking for you to continue to fund this effort. They need $10 million. $10 million is a drop in the bucket for the, the amount of kids that we have touched in this program. I, I would like to tell you just one more thing real quick. Kathy came up with the idea of bringing therapy dogs to schools. There's 19 now in the schools. And there's call after call after call every day of schools wanting a dog. Absolutely, you may not think it's much, but it absolutely commits us to nurturing learning in lots of ways. I can tell you this story real quickly. And if this doesn't touch your heart, I don't know what does. Little kid, I think the kid is at Pineville Elementary. He has real problems, real, real problems and everything. He's in a wheelchair. He didn't want to come to school. He didn't want to come to school. We were losing him in every way. He got a dog at the school. And he got the dog, all of a sudden he started coming to the school and he'd read to the dog. This is a kid in elementary school. And then someone came to him and said, and he would hardly talk. And someone said to him, how's your day today? You know what his words were? <laughs> Best day ever. You're doing a lot of good stuff. Our Teacher of the Year is with us tonight, Sharon Cole. She's a 34-year veteran educator, and she's teaching the second grade at Sarita Canova Elementary, and it is the first time we have a winner from Wayne County. If Sharon Cole could stand, please give her a giant round of applause. Our 2024 School Service Personnel of the Year winner is with us. His name is Gary Bridey, and Gary is from Canal, I'm, I'm sorry, from Cabell County, 
He's a school bus operator. And I am telling you, if you don't think for a second that we need all of our school serv uh, you know, per uh, service personnel, you're out in left field. These people are educators. These people are moms and dads. These people are everything to our kids. Where is Gary? In the gallery, we have sponsors. Highmark, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Toyota are with us and everything tonight. Are y'all here anywhere? Well, we're clapping for you anyway. No, there y'all. <laughs> okay, now I'm moving along, and I don't have very far to go. But I just tell you just this. Now, I'm going to be really serious with you. And you know me, I don't blow smoke at many people. I don't have time to do it. And I don't know how to tell you this any more point blank than just this. <laughs> High school sports in this state's really important. Really, really, really important. It binds communities together. It does all kinds of really good stuff. I know... I know with the transfer rule and everything that you were trying to do the right thing because we want choice. We want choice for our parents. I get all that. I get every bit of it. But if you won't watch out what's going to happen and you got to listen to a guy now that's a coach, I tried to tell you before, but absolutely when you've got teams that are losing 93 to 7 and 86 to nothing in football, it's got to stop. And we have made this situation to where we are going to absolutely, if we don't watch out, we are going to ruin, and I said ruin, high school sports in West Virginia. It's going to really hurt us. Now, I don't know exactly what the right solution is, but I'm telling you, there's some dead gum smart people in this room, and today I am absolutely pleading with you to figure it out. Get this back on the right kilter. It's really important. You may absolutely not think for a second, well, what in the world? For crying out loud, my kids are grown and gone and everything else. Mine are too. But I go, and I go to be a coach. And the reason I go to be a coach is because, you see, before I tried to tell you, I don't go on vacations. I don't go anywhere because I think we live in the greatest place on the planet. That's all there is to it. You don't have to send me on any trips. I don't need your dollars. I don't need to go anywhere. I love West Virginia and all the greatness that we have all around us. You got to listen to me on this. Some way, somehow, we've got to resolve this and we've got to stop this. The last thing I would tell you is just this. If this isn't enough, I don't know what is. Those kids had to go to school the next day. You realize that? You just went on the football field and got beat 93 to 7, and you had to go to school the next day. What do you think those other kids in that school were saying to those kids? Kids can be tough. Now, they really can, and they can be cruel. We got to fix this. Helping kids, dual enrollment, 6,500 students have utilized. I am proposing 1.6 million of additional funding. I commend Fairmont State, Fairmont State for stepping up and helping with our foster kids, giving an ability for as high school students and everything to come to Fairmont State and study and get college credits and everything. Over and over and over, so many people are stepping up. I'm really, really proud when we signed West Virginia Invest to have free community college. 
Since that time, 4,500 students have worked and worked with that grant. It's good stuff. I've talked to you just one second about dilapidated structures. You know, we passed Senate Bill 368. We've gotten rid of 500 structures that were just eyesores and problems and coke houses and whatever it may be. You've helped it. But in total, in total, I think the DEP is projecting that we'll do another 1,500 or have 1,500 total. I don't know which exactly it is. By the end or the summer of 2025, we've got a lot more. Every time we make this move, we make us better. That's all there is to it. We show ourselves off and make West Virginia shine even more. I got to talk to you just a second about tourism. Tourism, I mean, good gracious, I could talk till the cows come home. I said to you earlier, I said, anytime you're thinking about it, anytime you have the opportunity to spend a dollar on tourism, especially with the great Secretary Chelsea Ruby at hand, you, if you could spend a dollar, a dollar on tourism, do it. The world has awakened. The world has awakened to all that's going on. I mean, just think when I said close your eyes, one of the things, close your eyes. Think of the four unbelievable seasons and the fact that two-thirds of the population of our country can drive to us in a day. Think about the money we spent on our state parks. Did it work? Are you kidding me? You can't hardly get in our state parks. And think about the celebration of a new state park that we have. Absolutely right there at Summersfield. So much going on, it is unbelievable. In 2017, Chelsea told me we had four straight years of tourism spending dropping in West Virginia. Boy, has that ever changed. So Chelsea, wherever you are, thank you so much. Keep it up. We've got 40 more elk on the way to West Virginia. How about that? Now that's the really good news. There's some bad news with this, and this is not good. But one of our folks was down there, and they were, I don't know exactly what they were doing. I don't know all the details, but I wasn't going to bring this up, but I've got to tell you this and everything. But one of our folks was down there, you know, working these elk and everything, and getting them ready for transport, and had a tranquil, tranquilizer gun, and some way, somehow, it ended up shooting himself in the leg with it. Now, that's not a good day because the elk is a 500-pound animal and you just took a, twank, a tranquilizer dart for a 500-pound animal and you may weigh 150 pounds. Not a good day at all. We were scared to death that we were going to lose him. We really, really thought we were going to lose him. And now I think I can report to you that he's in Nashville in the hospital and he's doing pretty good. And I think it's going to be okay. Before, before I close, let me go back to just this. I want to talk to you just a second about roads. You know, again, when I first walked in to the governor's office and they handed me those books, and they were tough, really tough. And I don't know many things in this world, but I'm a business guy, and I know when somebody's bankrupt, and if we weren't bankrupt, I'd tell you, you were crazy. Literally from that, and this is where I really truly believe that God always shows up. Always. You see, it may not be on our timetable, but some way, somehow, God always shows up. 
You know, of all things, it's not a very pretty sight, so block this out of your mind, but I was in the shower. <laughs> block it out of your mind. Now, we're good with that being way out of your mind. And I thought, what are we going to do? What in the world are we going to do? And then it just hit me. I said, wonder what it would cost every breathing West Virginian if we let every road job that we had, even remotely on the books, if we let them all go tomorrow, what would it cost? And that's where the idea of Roads to Prosperity started. And off we went. And absolutely, with that, whether it be the Grant Street Bridge or the bridges at Wheeling, you know, whether it be just getting yourself to the convenient mark because you couldn't get there without tearing your car up before, it's unbelievable. Think about this number. In five years, we have done road work, now get this, to 485,333 miles of roads. In the Roads to Prosperity program, we've done 1,200 pro projects. It's unbelievable. And before I leave you, I would tell you again, absolutely with all in you, finish quarter H. We're really close. We just approved another award today. We're getting really close. Finish it and absolutely finish the Coalfield Expressways and the King Coal Highway. Finish them. The Coalfield... <laughs> the Coalfield Expressway and the King Coal Highway will bring Southern West Virginia the world. And quarter H, my gracious sakes of living, linking that up to DC and all the population and everything will bring us jobs like you can't imagine. Think about this just one second. In 2017, we very courageously came up and said, we're gonna spend a billion, 400 million billion dollars and then in 2020, it plummeted up another $5.1 billion. And by the end of 2023, it stood at 11.5 billion. And in 2024, we're representing that we're gonna spend another $2 billion in projects. Now these men and women from our highway department you know, I had to bring you something out here. But they have, they have a banner. But in, get this. So, in total, that's over $13.4 billion in cu cumulative infrastructure investment in West Virginia during my administration. And I want you to look, I want you to look at the number of projects and where they are. They're everywhere. They're blooming everywhere. And these folks are making it happen. Please give them a monstrous round of applause. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Now, I've been good up to now. I've been good up to now except a little, little kid at Pineville Elementary. Now, let me just tell you this. Now, I probably could use your prayer just a little bit because this is really tough on me right here. You know, I've got a story to tell you, but I've got this to tell you, and this is, this is where we end this. You know, I'm a real believer, just like I said, that God always shows up. I've been so blessed. How in the world 
How in the world did I come up with the idea of Roads to Prosperity? How on earth did I come up with that? Do you think in any way that Jim Justice believes that he's good enough to have come up with that idea? No way. No way. In all honesty, I was given that idea. Absolutely, we have been blessed beyond all good sense. And we should absolutely always never forget that. Let me tell you a story real quick. My basketball team, most of them that are up there, y'all stand up. Now just stand there. This is going to be really hard on you, but you can make it. Last year, we played Princeton twice in the regular season. Now, we're not used to losing at Green Bar East. But then we played them in the tournament. And it just so happened that Woodrow had the number one seed, and so two and three had to play each other. And we played Princeton at our place. We were the two seed. Well, when we had played them at our place before, we'd won really big, but we'd played a really close game with Princeton not long ago, and it was at Princeton. So they came in and they played a really nice game, and we lost. And gosh, I was just fit to be tied, and probably all of them were pretty sad. You know, this is hard to believe, but really, for the most part, when we're on the floor, we have one junior a whole bunch of sophomores and a whole bunch of freshmen, and that's what we got. Now, so they were, that, last year, a lot of them that were sophomores now were freshmen then. But anyway, I'm on the way to Charleston the next day, and I can't get out of my mind, you know, how it went last night, and it went terrible, and we were out of the whole deal then. We were just gone. It was over. And for a lot of those kids, I mean, they're just, you know, they just feel like, what in the world just happened? And I walked in my office. Now remember I said just a minute ago, God always shows up. So I walked in my office and Rebecca, who gives me letter after letter after letter, and lots of times there's no way to keep up with reading all the letters after letters after letters, but we try. We try to run, or to read just every one we can get. So Aunt Rebecca said, I don't have any idea who this is, but you may want to read this. So in comes this letter to the Honorable Jim Justice. It says, Dear Coach, I was recently on a run with my two sons, and they started complaining about being tired. When they asked if we could walk instead of run, I told them to keep sawing the wood. After we completed the run, they asked me, what did that phrase mean? While explaining it meant to, and this is very small print, so it's hard for me to see it. But while explaining it meant to per persevere through adversity by continuing to make steady progress, I was reminded of when I first heard you use that phrase. While facing a large halftime deficit in the Sweet 16 tournament of the AAU National Tournament against the team from Ohio, you told me and the rest of the West Virginia All-Stars to keep sawing the wood. We had played very poorly in the first half and the beginning of your halftime speech was one of only a few times I ever saw you express true disappointment in our effort. However, you reminded us that we could come back just as we did if we had just keep sawing the wood. As you already know, we came back and won that game and went on to advance to the quarterfinals of the National AAU Tournament. Then he says, although we won this specific game, and many others, the life lessons we learned while playing basketball for you were far more important than the outcome of the game. 
When I was at Army Ranger School or on a military deployment, I reminded myself daily to keep sawing the wood. Now I applied in the business world and as a father. Thank you for your leadership you provided during my youth and more broadly for your leadership to the great state of West Virginia. With only a few days or months left remaining as governor, I encourage you to keep sawing the wood. Please send my regards to Kathy and Jay and Jill. Below is my current contact information. If you would like to contact me, note I currently reside in Germany. I have with us tonight a real American hero, one of many, 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 a West Point graduate, Matt Fitzwater, and get this, he served as an Army officer in the field artillery branch. He obtained the rank of captain. He completed three combat deployments to Iraq. He won the Bronze Star, or was awarded the Bronze Star, the Combat Action Badge, the Ranger Tab, the Parachute Badge, and the Air Assault Badge. It's amazing. I had not heard from Matt Fitzwater in 25 years. And there was his letter. And it stood for every single thing that I stand for. You see, I believe that God always shows up. And I believe in my life that what we all, every last one of you should be doing is trying to make things better. Trying to make things better in every way you possibly can. You see, if I'm coaching a basketball team and I'll put my record up against anybody, anywhere, anytime, because we want to win just as much as anybody wants to win. But I'm going to tell you right now, when those kids leave me, if all I can give them is the ability to be able to dribble the basketball better, and I haven't done much. You absolutely can do so much for this great state, it's unbelievable. Some way right here with us is Matt Fitzwater and his family, his mom and dad, Donna and Randy, and I want the roof to come off of this because it's a great American hero, and absolutely, I don't know where you are, Matt, but wherever you are, stand up. Matt's team, a little ragtag bunch of kids from Beckley, West Virginia. Jay, one of them, my son right here. Unbelievable experience, wasn't it, Matt? With all that being said, Matt was a point guard. With all that being said, I'll ask you right now to do what I asked you to do just a little while ago, or I told you I was gonna ask you to do. I want you to just close your eyes just one second. Just one second. And imagine that place that abounds in natural resources beyond belief, like I said before, and is close to two-thirds of the population of the country, has four unbelievable seasons and the greatest people on the planet. But imagine a state that's booming job after job, company after company, 
hope and belief beyond belief, travel guides that say West Virginia of all places is a place to be. And now open your eyes and know that place is us, is West Virginia. I would say to each and every one of you, keep sawing the wood. God bless you. Thank you. You have just seen and heard Governor Jim Justice's eighth and final state of the state address. I'm Randy Yowie for West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Be sure to tune in to the 2024 edition of the legislature today. We begin our Monday through Friday broad broadcast tomorrow night, Thursday night at 6 p.m. Thanks for watching. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, the business of the Joint Assembly having been concluded, Chair declares the Joint Assembly dissolved. If all members and guests would please be seated. House will briefly be in order. The clerk has an executive message. Dear Speaker Hanshaw, I herewith submit, pursuant to the Constitution of the State of West Virginia, a budget and budget bill for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2024. Sincerely, Jim Justice, Governor. Message be received. General 96. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to return to the ninth order of business for the purpose of introducing a bill. Gentlemen, ask unanimous consent to return to the ninth order of business for the purpose of receiving bill introductions. Are there objections? No objections are heard. Bills introduced. House Bill 4025, Budget Bill. A making bill appropriations of public money out of the Treasury in accordance with Article 6, Section 51 of the Constitution. A bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Are there other bills to be introduced at this time? If not, unfinished business. Bills on third reading. Bills on second reading. Bills on first reading. Leaves of absence. Leaves of absence. Introductions. Miscellaneous business. Gentleman 96. Mr. Speaker, subject to announcements, I move that the House do now adjourn until 11 a.m. tomorrow. Question on the gentleman's motion that's subject to announcements. The House tend to adjourn until 11 a.m. tomorrow. Are there announcements? Are there announcements? If not, those in favor of adoption of the gentleman's motion that the House stand adjourn until 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, please say aye. aye. As opposed to please say no. The ayes have a chair declares the motion adopted. The House of Delegates is adjourned. The House of Delegates is adjourned. Ladies and Well, we had to wait to be adjourned.
Randy Oi still. Is Randy Oi still here with you? As uh, we saw, the Speaker of the House Roger Hanshaw officially introduce Governor Justice's budget for fiscal year 2024, and uh, now there's a presentation being made. Some interesting things in this eighth and final State of the State address. We heard that uh, in corrections, for example, we've had more than 350 National Guardsmen and women working in an emergency status in our jails and prisons. Governor Justice says that uh, the downsizing is going on now, and by the end of the summer, he expects the National Guard to be out of the corrections. Uh, we've had more than 250 hires recently. The Commissioner of Corrections and Rehabilitation, William Marshall, has been working hard on that, and, and Governor Justice made that announcement as well. Um, he also announced that uh, the House and Senate should do something about the high school transfer rule. He didn't know what exactly needed to be done, but he knew that it wasn't working well, so he says, and that it needs to be resolved, that it needs to be fixed. So that's something that, that they'll take a look at as well. He uh, listed off a number of dollar amount projects that are going to come out of that surplus budget, he says. Um, $20 million to senior centers, $15 million to state parks, $2 million to uh, state veterans' homes, 